way back home, there could be some really interesting encounters. Take a look. Is the Kekele toch? How the three-time heavyweight champion finally, effortlessly dropped that plastic bottle. You know, Katutura. Yeah, yeah. Last time I checked, there were no pets in Katutura, but go on. Yeah, Korean hub dump. <laughs> so you see, when I shoot, I shoot left. Me? Yeah. Sublif. Yes, but what is your excuse? What uh, is your excuse? I'm bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I haven't done this since I was probably just as nine. Yes, see, I was got nine, ten years old. Ah, ne je kan daj spud si. Ah, you can daj spud si. Ah, if I don't have blood, then it's like it's like Clint Eastwood. So, who is David and who is Goliath? Yay! Yes. Yo! Ne kijk je aan, nee. Je kan zien dat mensen van die zeiden hier, dit zijn people of the south. Is hier jas nama of pasta? Ja. Nee, zo ga ik niet. Nee, maas ik kan, dus niet pas. Hoe was ik pasta? Ah, let guys, let's explain. Pasta bloed. Oké, je maas ik kan is wat? Pasta bloed. Je oma. Pasta oba. Je oma. Mijn baas ik kan is ik tamara. Is het? Oh. Mijn baas maas tamara. Oké. Oké. Zo, zo. Namas en zo. Dus daar waar ik boer is, ik is geen drie bloed. Je drie bloed. Hij boeren van hem. Tauw hap. Tauw hap. Ik ga je twaalf tien jaar te lang. Zo. Zeventien jaar daar ga je. Nee. Hoe lang kan je nou rijden van van de ritueka? Roto. Je kan nou dus hou. Je kan net. Je kan hoe vast leren net. Nee. Je moet wel steenen wat niet wil stoppen. Je moet je geklim. Oké. Wie is die middel steenen? Falbok. Wat is dat nee? Die middel steenen. Hij wil niet stoppen. Ik moet je gaan staan. Falbok. Hij wil niet stoppen. Hij wil niet. Hij wil niet stoppen niet. Als hij begint aan te lopen, aan te lopen. Omdat die rikaren van die stad, als die rikaren begint aan te lopen, begint aan te lopen. Dat is niet lekker niet. Ja, hier is wel eens wat uit. Oh, dat moet dus maar los. Dat je ne, ah, je wil iets lopen, je 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 probleem. This is like the official, the second official mode of transportation in this part of the world. At the current diesel price, we might have to put donkey cart transportation yeah, on large-scale production. And Jan was explaining to us, you know, uh, these three donkeys, uh, they have very interesting names. The donkey on your far right, this dark brownish one, his name is Blue... Is it no, Blackberry. 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 But Jan said that, that I mean that that's the most expensive cell phone. Yeah. And the middle one is called. This is a Beyonce. Of <laughs> and the middle one is called Chrisbok, mm. or like Greybuck mm. or Falbok. Mm. Um, uh, and and what is Irene's name American? Polar. Huh? Polar. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 And once again, we find out what's in a name. No, daar boen van boel aan de klomp donkeys. Ons was daar boog geweest. Dat is klop. Ik denk niet, ons moet net die hele donkies hierdie kant toe brengen. Jullie zijn hier vanaf gevat. Oh! Voor de kat van jou. Ah, dit is niet. Hoe kom ik die donkies gevat? Voor die steen. Ha? Voor die bloem. It's amazing what you discover when you get in your car and start traveling. Our next stop was a little place called Connie's Coffee. We sat down and got his story. Laas. Ja. Your son is next to Gusta. So, so, so you thought like you know we're gonna be home by now? No, I'm happy with being. I'm yeah, that's that's what you thought. Eh? No, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, mm. driving all the way from where? From Desert Grace this morning since Good time. nine. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, thank you. <laughs> what what makes this place? What makes this place? Yeah, for you. For me, mm -hmm. or for the tourists? No, for you. For me. Man, uh, you see, I'm not so 
in bushes anymore. And then in Windhoek, you, you, you knew me there right. at Joyce, and it was tough. Um, because I did all the work for the coffee shops and then uh, they uh, took a different coffee. So I struggled there. And then uh, I thought, no, I'd go to the desert to start my own business. And then everybody said, no, go to Solitaire because they've got the bakery there. Right. And then I thought, that's a good idea. I make a, a unique coffee shop there because I've got plenty of ideas. <laughs> But then I sat there for five minutes and it was so busy and I didn't see myself <laughs> making coffee from six to six. With the shop was very busy. The Solitaire, mm. yes, for the bakery. Yeah. So I drove off and then I came past here and I asked, uh, can I make my coffee shop here? And I said, God at your steer. God at your steer. And then a month later I started here. Yeah? And... Uh, Ach, it, it was for me so exciting to meet people from all over the world coming here. It was really uh, until the lockdown started and then it got a bit lonely. But now it's my home with uh, I've got most things I need here. It's a typical, I think what they call in the West, living off the grid. Yes. Like, yeah. Totally. Is, is it a good life? It is a very good life, yes. Because you you don't have neighbors to compete with. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can just, imagine. You can just do your thing. And uh, actually discover yourself ne? without any outside influence. Ne? Like this. Wow. And you've been staying here for how long now? It's now four and a half years. Four and a half years? Mm -hmm. Wow. And this place is called Connie's Coffee. Connie's Coffee. And it's right, literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It, You're about two, three kilos away from... One and a half. Clang up. One and a half. Clang up. Mm. Wow. I never... Who wants to see you? <laughs> Neville embracing, not giving a damn. It, it's just part of Namibian culture. Just the nice... Ah, please. <laughs> I, I could stay here for Trust you. me. This I'll peace and tranquility, Gunther, I appreciate it. No. This really charges your batteries until you have to go and take on another five days of just corporate pounding in no. Munduk. So this is much appreciated, must say. <laughs> he gave us a beautiful explanation on how he prepares his coffee. So for the coffee, right? I start with uh, about 60 degree water. 60 degrees. 60 degrees. And then I clean the filter mm -hmm. and I warm up my glass. No? Mm -hmm. And then I add about uh, 10 grams of coffee because mm -hmm. I grind my coffee here and it's a bit coarser. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes the taste come a little bit more stronger, the difference between the taste. And then I let it sink in for about one minute and then I come with the hot water, it's cooled off. So I first uh, clean the filter mm -hmm. and I warm up the glass. Mm -hmm. Then I add, then I have to clean my glass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I add uh, 10 grams of coffee and then I just start the coffee just to wetten the coffee and this will be a process now of about one minute mm -hmm. basically until it runs through mm -hmm. so is this hotter than this yes okay this is 60 degrees 60 degrees mm -hmm. 60 degrees you get the feel for it if you make an es uh, with an espresso machine if you make the milk mm -hmm the foam, the milk, mm -hmm. if it gets too hot, then it's about 60, 63 degrees. Then you have to finish it. So I just test with a finger. <laughs> then I get sick. <laughs> and this is in hot water. And then I just keep the, uh, the water on the coffee. Uh -huh. yeah? Let me see this. Uh -huh. yeah, I just keep it on the coffee. I, I lived in Hamburg. And then the Americans came there mm -hmm. with their fancy coffee. And the people paid a lot of money for, for a coffee. And I thought, now, what is this now? And then I went to do the barista training on, on weekends, you know, just to, for, to, to feed my interest. So uh, I learned a little bit about coffee. And then coming back here, um, because in, in Hamburg, it was not my life. It was just too crowded. 
like here I meet more people <laughs> I know <laughs> than on the station in Hamburg with 500,000 people turning every day. Sure. Yeah, and here I meet more people that I know. Namibia is so the best place to escape a crowd and rediscover and your freedom. To do the Tai Chi and meditation and non-violent communication was a struggle. Then I did two years with the sun in the north. Tai Chi? So also. You, so you do Tai Chi as well? Yes. No, never. What is this? There's not, ba not ballet, he said Tai Chi. <laughs> and the Bushmen, we've got Bushmen engravings here just, just two kilometers from here. Mm -hmm. They are 60,000 years old. Sure. 60,000 years old. So now we come here and we, say, we tell the sun people they are, uh, they are behind, mm. which is so much nonsense. Mm. So they've been highly developed. Mm. And now we tell them, no, you are underdeveloped. Mm. And it doesn't matter who comes and helps them. They think they have to help them and they speak down to them, mm -hmm. which is nonsense. You know, the people have got a, a, a long history and they survived with all these <laughs> things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the development work, they don't need to be developed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's an insight actually. And the more you help them, the more helpless they become. They become. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it was sad to see. And uh, my, my solution to that would be to introduce our system to them. Mm. Gunther, when I met you a few years back, what, one thing that fascinated me about the coffee thing was the, the ethics about and the story of why you got involved in mm. doing this particular type of coffee, the coffee. Do you mind explaining that to us? I think it's a very interesting. Um, if you make a good coffee, I used to drive to, to where I get a good coffee, mm -hmm. like a Joyce, she had at the time very yeah. good coffee. And uh, I thought if people make a good coffee, then you will have two cups, like I even experience it here, that tourists come and they stop and they have two, three coffees, you know, just sitting here. So that was my basic idea. And then I had to discover, is my, again, my perception, is in Windhoek are too many coffee shops mm -hmm. and too little feet. There's just two, three coffee shops that make it on coffee. Mm. The others have to make catering, weddings. Mm. They have to do all sorts of things mm. to get through. And the mm. rentals are very high. It's high. High, no? Like, it's very you high. imagine what Joy paid there? Mm -hmm. So this whole thing with the coffee didn't balance. People couldn't afford good coffee. The coffee shops. Mm. You know, they had to get through somehow. Mm -hmm. They didn't service machines. They... Uh, they didn't do much effort, you know, just coffee out, 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 out. And uh, then I thought, no, I, then I'll do my own thing. Yeah, I can do. So historically, staying in an area that's basically been the habitat of the, the Buster Gemeenschap. Yeah. So how, how have you been relating to the Buster Gemeenschap for so many years here, here. in Klein op, klein op. Gebied. It was uh, for me quite a good lesson to come here. Uh, they told me you come into Basteland now, and I said yeah. so what? Because we had uh, <laughs> connections in Windhoek and wherever. It was never a big deal. And then I came here, and the cars were just turning around and going out, just turning. And I thought, what is happening? Then I asked in town uh, at the shop, and they said, no, there's no a Wittmann there. That's no Wittmann. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it took them a year that, that made me learn, study the history of the Buster to understand them better. Mm. And then uh, after a year they started coming because they're very into uh, Christmas, Easter with the family. Mm. And the family comes together. Mm. Most of them have a farm or small farms here. And then they come here for coffee and cake and, and things like this. No? So now it is easy. We've been making and we've been poking fun, I think, for the last 25 years, me and Laz, about the cultural differences of Namibians and yeah. how we relate to each other. And, and, and as Namibians, the, the, the German buster hero <laughs> history is, is obviously, it's a very contentious issue, but then again, we poke fun at it. Yes, yes. So, um, I will let you say, Gunther, um, um, you'll become 
very rich yeah. uh, one of these good old days because I spoke to the Buster Gemeenskap. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, this is now in light of the compensation that the Heros will now receive okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. from Deutschland. Yes. Maar die pastors het vir my gesê, kyk Neville, ons het moest die oorlog gewen teen die duisters. So, we will pay them compensation for <laughs> defeating them. <laughs> <laughs> so the first stop is here. <laughs> yeah, the first. They'll come and bring you your money. <laughs> your spirit is here and not in Hamburg. Yes, yes. So yes, the yes. day your day comes, mm. do we put you in this ground or do we take you to Hamburg? No, I'm booked here. You're booked here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a, at the back there is uh, 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 Willy and, and Connie, they are living there. Aha, uh -huh, they oh. are living there. And there's space for me already. I see. Why do you want to ask such a morbid question? It's not morbid, <laughs> it's history. <laughs> I've always wanted to ask, why do Germans write the number seven with a stripe through it? <laughs> because our one is like this. Uh -huh. it's, it's not like a line, no? it's uh -huh. like this. And if you make the seven, you just then because it's otherwise it comes too close. Yeah. I, I, I got another explanation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a German friend. His name is Thorsten. He gave me another reason why the Germans write the number seven with a stripe through it. He told me, you, you know, never you must understand. The seventh commandment in the Bible says, thou shall not commit adultery. Yes. Yeah. Now we Germans, we looked at it and we said, Ach, scheiße, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that is true. <laughs> no. is not going to answer that. Ah, you need to answer that. No, I, I, Doch, I, I yeah? cannot say. Gunther, <laughs> I cannot. Gunther, all the interviews we've done so far, I think this is the most calm wow. and quiet yeah. I have seen. You know why? He's the most calm and quiet I've seen him be. Okay. And very calm. Because normally he's all over the place. He'll be shouting and screaming and whatever. <laughs> but because of your spirit, yeah. he, he has no choice but to be very, very Next on I Love Namibia, we hit the Zambezi. <laughs>